Welcome to Storyline Online, brought to you by the SAG After Foundation. I'm Justin Thoreau, and today I will be reading Here Comes the Garbage Barge, written by Jonah Winter and illustrated by Red Nose Studio. Garbage. Big, heaping, stinking mounds of garbage. Big bags of garbage on the sidewalk. Garbage trucks overflowing with garbage. Landfills reaching up to the heavens with more and more garbage, garbage, garbage. Did you know that the average American makes about four pounds of garbage every day? Well, a while back in the town of Islip, the average person made seven pounds of garbage in a day. Islip is a little town on Long Island, right near New York City. And Islip had a problem. Garbage. To be exact, 3,168 tons of garbage. And nowhere to put it. Enter the garbage barge. See, this guy in the garbage business named Gino Struffolino came up with a brilliant plan. A garbage barge would carry the Long Island garbage down to North Carolina. Mr. Struffolino had a friend there, Joey LaMotta. Everything is arranged, Joey told him. You bring me that garbage, I'll take care of it. Some poor farmers will be paid to take the garbage and bury it on their farms. Clever, huh? So on March 22, 1987, 3,168 tons of garbage was loaded up. Then a little tugboat named the Break of Dawn began its long journey south, tugging the rusty old garbage barge behind it. The Break of Dawn was a happy little tugboat. Her captain and crew was Captain Duffy St. Pierre, crusty old sailor. Together, they tugged the garbage barge down the east coast of America. Doot, doot, said the tugboat as it entered the harbor at Moorhead City, North Carolina. North Carolina, land of sand dunes and pine trees, of barbecue and mountains and basketball. Smelling something strange, two old sisters who lived on the beach ran and got their binoculars. Look, said Miss Alma McTiver. It's garbage in our beautiful harbor, said Miss Ida McTiver. What the hairy heck, that ain't right, call the law. So a police boat went out to greet the garbage barge. It wasn't a friendly greeting. You can't park that garbage in our harbor. Well, I've got orders to duck here and I'm gonna follow them, cried Captain Duffy. I'm afraid you can't do that, said the policeman. Well, blow me down, said Captain Duffy, scratching his whiskers, and he radioed his boss. They don't want our garbage, Captain Duffy said to Gino Strafolino. Where's that fella who was supposed to meet me? Hey, Joey had a little accident, said Mr. Strafolino. Just stay put while I make a couple of calls. But the minutes turned into hours, turned into days. Just Captain Duffy with a barge full of garbage. It wasn't much company. Finally, Mr. Strafolino's voice came through on the radio. Bring that garbage down to New Orleans, he said. I know this guy, Tony Caffoni. He'll take it. Well, let those saints go marching in, shouted Captain Duffy. See, New Orleans was his hometown. Surely folks back home would be happy to see him and his big load of garbage. Ahoy, he called as he came within view of the city. Hard to starboard, there she blows. New Orleans. Birthplace of jazz, home of black and red fish, and streets filled with music and friendly faces, streetcars, garbage. The mayor could see the garbage barge way off on the horizon. News of the wandering garbage barge had already reached him. We've got enough of our own trash, he told his staff. Call the Coast Guard. Coast Guard arrived just in time to stop the garbage barge from making it up the mighty Mississippi. Shiver me timbers, moaned Captain Duffy. You can't do this to a hometown boy. Oh, yes, we can, cried the Coast Guard. What could Captain Duffy say? All righty then, full speed backwards, he ordered himself. Aye, aye, Captain, he answered. And at dusk, the break of dawn and the tired old garbage barge began their sad journey back out to sea. There they were floating out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. This was getting ridiculous. Would no one take this garbage? Which, by the way, was really starting to stink. Captain Duffy radioed his boss. Okay, said Gino Strafolino. There's this guy down in Mexico. He owes me a favor. Goes by the name John Smith. I'll tell him you're coming. 
All righty then, Captain Duffy grumbled. Southward ho, Mexico. Land of enchantment, of enchiladas and folk art, of swaying palm trees and moonlit beaches. News of the floating garbage barge arrived before Captain Duffy. As the garbage barge approached Telchec Puerto, it was surrounded by the Mexican Navy. Váyase, came a voice through a loudspeaker. Rápido, and that means get moving fast in Spanish. These guys had guns. Captain Duffy had no choice. He turned his little tugboat around and slumped across the wheel. He headed back out to sea. Where next? The captain asked Mr. Struffolino. Belize, said Mr. Struffolino. It's a country next to Mexico. I know this guy, Rico D'Amico. Belize, land of bananas, of beautiful coral reefs, tropical flowers, and colorful birds. Pictures of the garbage barge have been on the local news. Captain Duffy almost reached the dock when he saw a line of soldiers waving their arms. Congo, they shouted. Roughly translated, that means forget about it. Six weeks had passed since the garbage barge had set out, and the garbage was getting really funky. Nobody wanted it, and of course they didn't. It was somebody else's six-week-old garbage. Captain Duffy radioed Mr. Straffolino once again. I can't take it anymore. I quit. OK, OK, said Mr. Straffolino. Take the garbage back to Long Island. But I got a couple places you could try along the way. Texas, the Lone Star State, home of cowboys, cacti, Cadillac, and oil. Black gold, they call it. The garbage barge arrived in the harbor near Houston, only to find some Texas Rangers in speedboats shaking their heads. New. No. Next stop, Florida, the Sunshine State, home of alligators, beautiful beaches, oranges, and grandparents. The garbage barge was not welcome. By now, the garbage barge was famous. It had been on TV and in the headlines of all the papers. Comedians even told jokes about it. <laughs> but as Captain Duffy and the break of dawn tugged into New York Harbor, they were a sad sight. Captain Duffy's mouth hung open. The little tugboat forgot to toot. And the garbage barge looked like the saddest and smelled the smelliest of all. Well, me mateys, here we are. Back where we began, Captain Duffy sighed as his two boats finally pulled into Islip's harbor. But guess what? Islip had seen this coming. They refused to take the garbage. And the garbage was not welcome anywhere, on Long Island or in New Jersey or in New York City either. For a whole summer, Captain Duffy and his little tugboat tugged the garbage around New York. What else could they do? Look, Mom, kids would say, here comes the garbage barge. As the summer days got hotter, the garbage grew beyond stinky. Someone had to take it. They just had to. Then, at last. Good news, said Gino Straffolino when he radioed the tired old captain. Here's the deal. Brooklyn's going to take that garbage and they're going to burn it. The judge told them they had to. See, they got this incinerator. Aye, aye, bumbled Captain Duffy. And on September 1st, 1987, 162 days after the garbage barge had first set out, it reached its final harbor, Brooklyn. Former home of the Dodgers, current home of synagogues and mosques, and greasy diners with breakfast specials. 3,168 tons of garbage was unloaded by cranes, put onto trucks, and hauled to the incinerator. It burned for hours, and when it was done, it only weighed 430 tons. Then it was hauled off and buried in a landfill in Iceland. The town had been forced by the judge to take back what was left of its stinking garbage. Justice. The break of dawn and Captain Duffy were free to go back to New Orleans. As they steered out to sea, people waved and took pictures. It's a fair wind and an open sea, me hearties. Crusty old captain shouted, and he patted the tugboat on its wheel. Together, they had traveled over 6,000 miles, tugging the unloved garbage barge. It was time to go home. The end. 
So the moral of the story is, don't make so much garbage, guys. And if you do make garbage, don't try and get other people to clean it up for you. Because all that garbage has to go somewhere. Sheesh. Thank you for watching Storyline Online. Make sure to check out all of our stories. Keep watching and keep reading.